All right, so it was a lot of arguing with this one too to get to this point. So uh, uh, we're learning this whole video thing here for you and we're, we're glad you're joining us and uh, coming back. So today's project is building the bar top for the Bloody Mary uh, trailer. And so if you focus here on my rough sketch, it's going to be a nice gentle curve. It's 140 inches long, so it's quite long, 11 foot eight. And the cool thing about this bar is it's going to be all plastic laminate. Uh, it will be a wood grain, a rustic wood grain in the middle, and it's going to be flanked and uh, surrounded by a two inch red, tomatoey red border. And that red is, the reason we're putting that in there is uh, it's in the food hall, so we want basically eye candy. We want you know someone from across the hall to look down the hall and see uh, this white trailer uh, with a little splash of color to you know make it pop. We have a gorgeous vintage red uh, painted wheel as well we're going to have a red awning and it's uh, I think just with the red on the top and the little spot of red with the wheel on the bottom it's just not quite enough. So adding this little red strip just ties things. Uh, another thing when I do designs, I do a lot of things in threes. And the reason for that is it, it just looks harmonious. It's, it's just a nice balance. Um, so that's just a little trick when I design as well. So you can see 140 inches long, that's quite long, uh, almost 12 feet long. So I've cut two blanks. This is gonna be the inside part, uh, the main field of the bar top and I just finished cutting a spline, so we're just gonna make a spline here uh, to join the two. I use a spline, there's many ways of joining the wood. Uh, there's pocket screws, uh, biscuits, and I like the spline. The spline is like a tongue and groove. It adds a lot of strength and it's quick and easy to do. So uh, we're just gonna continue on with that and you'll see the whole process from start to finish here. All right. As you watch me, I do not have birds on some of my equipment. Uh, it's just a personal choice. So if you're doing this kind of work yourself, uh, follow and re read and follow all the instructions that come with your equipment and you know, wear eye protection, it's, it's big time. I uh, can't stress that enough, but just because- <laughs> We don't. <laughs> I, I, just because I don't uh, uh, doesn't mean that you, you should, uh, shouldn't as well. So. It's just a personal choice. It's something I feel comfortable with. And that's enough said with that. So what I'm gonna do is just chop this off. said in previous videos, you know, everything's long. Um, I have done bar tops like this. Uh, you'll see it's similar. Um, uh, 
uh, it, it's something that looks good. Uh, customers respond well to it. And um, so I chose to do the bar cover. I, one of my specialties is doing curved work, and it's something I enjoy. It's more of a challenge. Curves are nice because they soften the look of the coach. So we try and integrate curves into a lot of our work. So we already know that this is our middle. So it's going to be 70 inches to the center, uh, minus the two inches that we're going to add uh, for that little decorative red strip. So it's going to be 68 and to be 68, which it is perfect. So we have to double check. Now this is where we get to decide our curve and how, how much of a curve or how low. Again, a lot of people are going to be starting to sit at this uh, bar, so we we want it uh, you know to be as comfortable for everyone, you know, maximum. Uh, obviously, with a curve, we're going to be having less here, uh, but. You know, we want to make it sizable enough that it's still comfortable for someone to put their arm in their drink. So I'm thinking something like that. Every day. Because I, I need them for doing setup. I literally have to go through this every fucking day. <laughs> oh my god. Well, I guess I gotta cut new ones, which is a nice big waste of my time. Now I really don't want this film, Terry. This is this is ridiculous. Now, good times in the old shop. Okay, we found the wood. <laughs> Everything's okay. <laughs> Crisis averted. Yeah, yeah. Crisis averted. All right. So I'm putting a block of wood there, and then I'm just going to be holding the side with a clamp. Over, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just walk here. You know, people say it's it, it's really it must be really nice to have a big shop. Well, sometimes it's it's a curse as well because it just means your stuff is spread out a little bit more. <laughs> and you have more stuff. And more stuff. So mm -hmm. it's a curse and a blessing and a curse. This is going to be a 13 inch. There, doesn't have to be super fat. This is just a third hand. Now, 
when I'm doing curves and so forth like this, I just kind of step back and you know, view it like it would be out in the public. So see if it just looks good, feels good. I'm just sliding down. This is quite a straight, straight curve here. So I think I want it now. Don't let's not forget that there's going to be an extra two-inch strip here, uh, which will help smooth or you know make it look a lot bigger. So it looks kind of small, smallish now, but we're not done. Yet. Easy to get flat spots when no, we don't really want a flat spot. We would like a nice, nice curve. So I'm just sliding down. And you know what? That looks that looks mighty fine. Okay. Back in the day, I worked at my home shop, my garage, that was in my mom's house <laughs> back in the day when I was younger. Um, she would actually help me out in the shop. Uh, this is something we always did together. So it's just, it's nice to have those memories. She would hold the uh, other end of the ruler for me and so forth, so good times. So we now have to make a left and a right, or a right and a left, however you want. You see it and uh, so it's going to be a little bit tough to get this exact uh, curve lined up on that side so what we're going to do is because this is half uh, we're going to cut and uh, sand this edge and then we'll flip it over and that becomes our template for the other side so it'll be exact. That's a good joint. There's no glue and it's holding them out. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, I'm going to go cut this. Also do a curved corner here. It's a lot more work. And I'm just wondering if it's even worth it. Um, the only thing is, is it's the look of it. So basically, I'll draw it out here. So if we've got like this, and then we've got it curved like this, you got this hard corner here with this round and it'll look skinny here. It's uh, not necessarily a bad thing or we could do the whole curve. 
curve like this so it's just a continuous. I'm looking at the trailer now because it's all curvy. It's a recreation of a Shasta trailer. And but there are sharp and straight points on the trailer as well. Okay, you know what? We're actually gonna just do the straight corner. Uh, I'm looking looking at the front window and so forth, and I think... Is the red strip going to be... Yeah, the red strip is two inch strip here, here. and then, and then it'll, here. It'll and be then mitered it'll be, and it'll then... Be, it'll be rounded here, yeah, so. Okay. I don't think it's mm. worthwhile for all the extra work here to do the round corner, even though it could be done. Yeah, I'm just looking, it's, the, the trailer is curved, but it's got square corners with the windows. Um, so I, you know, I just look at overall picture when I'm doing design and so forth, you know, how is it all going to look? So, um, anyway, we're just going to do the straight corners a little bit easier for me today. Okay. Let's go and sand this bit. Okay, so we curve or we uh, cut this curve and then sanded it right down to the line. And now I'm just going to be uh, marking this for the other side. And we'll repeat the process. So. We try and do our work uh, accurate as much as possible. Um, it's really something to do uh, accurate work and then stick it into an RV, which is the furthest thing from being accurate. It's, uh, <laughs> but you know, if my work looks good, then that's all that matters. It's just, you know, some things are out of your control and you do the best you can. Well, we're building from scratch, so. It can I mean, be perfect. Yeah, our work should always be the best it can be. So this will, this is two inches. This is what the over edge is going to be underneath. Uh, this gives our built down edge, and then you can see that'll overlap. So this is a little oversized. We're going to be cutting curves out of this, and also this. Um, so uh, we're losing some of the material. Uh, it'll make sense. <laughs> <laughs> the reason
reason I do make a mess, I do have garbage bins and so forth, but my brain goes about 40 miles an hour and uh, so my brain's just constantly going. So for me to stop and walk over to a garbage can, it's just one more speed bump in my, in my world. So that's why, and fortunately Terry is kind enough to pick up after me. I try not to be you know, horrible at it, but it's just the way my brain works and the way I work. So. It's always time to clean up afterwards. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to actually spline this together as well because it will be attached. So I'll do that. Slivers. So here's our add-on strip, the two inches. Um, it's still straight here, so we'll sh I'll show you how I deal with that. So we got the fit going pretty good here. Um, so this will be one color of laminate. This will be the next color of laminate. Um, this will have a little bit of, has a little bit of flex in it. We'll be able to clamp that all nice and super tight. Okay, so we're just uh, moving on with the production here.
this all be done with uh, the CNC's? Yes. Uh, I'm not computer savvy at all. I hate computers. So, you know, I think all in all, this is all hand done. I think all in all, you know, for me to sit down at a computer, which would frustrate me, I'd have to learn the whole programs and so forth. Uh, also, those CNC machines, you can see how big this is. So for me to invest in that, um, you know, it's, it, they're super wonderful, they're super accurate and so forth, but for the time it'd take me to probably plug in all the dimensions and so forth, I can probably do it in the same time frame as doing it by hand. And that's what I feel comfortable doing. So again, in this, you know, it's a smaller shop. You, you know, you don't always have to have the super high-end expensive equipment to do this kind of work. Um, but just good, good, decent quality tools uh, and a lot of know-how and you'll get it, you'll get it uh, done and you'll achieve uh, what, what you're looking for. Uh, I need a midget. We're going to sharpen this. So now that I've got the inside curve, I want to make it exact parallel um, to the outside curve. So uh, how we're going to do that is use this cool marking gauge, it's got ball bearings and it works for inside and outside curves. So we got it set up for two inches and here we go. off here. Okay, so you can see uh, just a little more than two inches, a little more than two inches, so it's perfect. It's looking good. Okay, so we'll sand this up. Cut and sand. Just repeat, repeat, repeat. Okay, moving further along, so you can see that I've got those two inch strips. What I've done is I've uh, just put the backer board underneath and I've screwed it from the top. I will be screwing it from the bottom. It's just for assembly. I'm just putting it, the screws in the top just to make my life a little easier at this point in time. Uh, these are going to go on here like this. And again, this is all going to be splined, which I've got the, the uh, groove cut. And then I'm just clamping this together because once you uh, cut these pieces, they kind of want to move. Get this little love tap. So by putting this down like this. One, I'll be able to separate these pieces and do my red laminate. So I can just uh, glue my red laminate. Then I can trim both front and back and it's a perfect curve. Um, and then uh, I've got my built down edge. Uh, what I'm gonna do is take a flush trim bit and just uh, router this and trim, trim this uh, bottom one to the top because this is exact. So it's just basically making patterns is, is how this construction is, is being done. So we're just going to fit this uh, up to this piece. We're close, but okay, so we got to just trim a little titch up Uh, 
is looking good. So we're going to put that slot spline in here and voila. It's just a just a touch, but you're not going to see that part. Moment. Yeah, I think we're okay. Okay, good. So as you see, this is pretty much the whole uh, countertop blank, as I call it. Um, so you saw, um, or you didn't, I can't remember if we showed you or not, but what I used was the flush cutting bit uh, to follow the top part, which we made that exact two inch strip. So now it's perfectly flat and flush, uh, really strong. So this can all still be uh, disassembled. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to wrap I'm going to take this panel off, I'm going to take this panel off just with these screws and then wrap it in the brown laminate and then I'm going to leave these, this part here attached, this will be the red and it's going to be attached to the bottom which is underslung as well and um, then I can just put on my red laminate and router it and it will be perfect and then I'll marry it back up and it should look really beautiful. So. There's the whole blank done, and next is off to laminate. So I was just checking to see how flexible the laminate was, and um, what it's not. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, this is there's general purpose, which is thicker. And then they had post form, which was a little thinner, and this is right in between. So um, this is a somewhat aggressive curve, and you can see here uh, it will bend. However, there's a lot of tension on it. So it you, you're going to see, I'm going to heat this up with a heat gun to form this curve. And it just takes, see how much spring is in there? It's just, it's, it's just a lot. So this is typical. I, uh, I bend, or I heat, heat the... Uh, heat it up and heat form it to the bend and then there won't be any worry of it moving down the road so all right uh, I'm gonna get my glue gun ready and we will s oh I've got to cut the other pieces of the lemon for the brown so we'll do that and move on because um, in pat in laminate and like flooring goods usually there's a repeat at around the four foot mark um, so now this is quite a busy pattern but you can see if, if there's a, prom a prominent um, light spot here but this is quite a, a wide spot I think that doesn't look super bad Okay, so uh, lining up the pattern, we can't get it 100% perfect uh, because the pattern repeat goes the other way. However, uh, just lining up these panels, this looks pretty decent to me, um, and we're going to go with it. So, uh, we, we, you know, you got to find that happy medium and uh, just go with it sometimes. That's looking mm. decent. Okay. So this is going to be red, and this is going to be red. Okay. It's going to be beautiful. like it. Mm -hmm. All right, cut All right, forming the laminate around the curve. So 
as I mentioned, it's just got too much spring. I mean, you could force it if you really wanted, but it's not a great idea. So I'm just lining this up. I'm giving myself some extra, and I've got the heat gun, not too high. And again, this is plastic laminate, so plastic melts uh, or softens with heat. Okay, so as I'm doing this, I'm not adding a lot of heat, and then I'm also bending it, and then when you can actually feel it in your fingers when it's getting soft and more pliable and holding a little more of the shape. If you do it too long and too much, then uh, you can actually scorch it and uh, mess it up. So, so this is looking good here, and then we bring it to the actual piece. And then it is warm, it is hot, hot to the touch. And then we form it around here and we'll let it cool as we hold it. And it should hold the shape. shape. So it's, uh, it doesn't actually take too long. Uh, I have done some quite aggressive bends. Uh, you have to watch. Sometimes you end up breaking a few pieces along the way uh, when it's super aggressive. This, is, this isn't too bad of a curve. This is about a well, two inch radius, maybe just a little, little more. So I'm just holding this so I can feel it cooling down. We're about to do the laminate now uh, and everything's been cleaned. Now this is a very thin form of uh, phenolic, so, uh, which is part of the plastic laminate. So plastic laminate is actually all these layers of impregnated uh, cardboard, basically, essentially, a resin, resin uh, filled core. And this thin layer, which is approximately about a quarter of the thickness of an actual sheet of laminate, uh, we use this on the back side. And the reason we do this is it's to balance out the sheet. So there'll be plastic laminate, the decorative good stuff on the, the, uh, the underside, which, will, which is actually the top. So we're putting this on the bottom and it just creates almost like a sandwich. And that way the moisture within the wood, the plywood, is more stable. So we're just gonna go, and go ahead and apply the glue. Just applying the red strip right now on the edge. This is an industrial strength contact adhesive. This is not the kind of stuff you get from uh, Home Depot and Lowe's. This is industrial strength. It also has a unique high heat resistance to it which is really great here in the desert where it does get up high in the temperatures. So this glue is pretty much guaranteed not to uh, give, give us problems. So that's uh, very important. Okay, that's gorgeous. And now we'll flush, so we'll uh, trim it flush here and then on the top here as well, because um, this is upside down right now. And then we will take it apart uh, the two sections, the inner part, and we will uh, put the laminate on the uh, border, the, that two inch border. So, moving along.
Every time we start, stop and start, holy smokes. There's an if argument. Only knew, if you only knew what I go for. <laughs> the bickering. <laughs> oh, it's, uh. okay. Anyway, here we are. Shop foreman in the house here, Valero. And uh, we're just finishing up for today. And just want to show you that it has the red stripe. And then tomorrow we're going to remove this inner panel just via the screws, uh, glue on the red laminate, uh, trim it up, uh, put the brown laminate on the center part, and then trim, trim that all up, and then it will just fit in here and marry up beautifully. So that's the way it's, we're doing it, and uh, I think it's going to look fabulous. So we'll see you tomorrow, and have a good day. Bye. Come on, boards. Come on, Bodie. You want to go for a car ride? Come on. Come on. Come on, boys. Hi, it's the next morning, continuing on with our project. And this is a completed one here as far as the two inch edge band goes. Um, so we, yesterday we wrapped the edge, today we uh, did the top face. So you can see I've already got my blank cut out here and that will be glued down to that like that. So uh, with it exploded here, I took out that center section which is going to be brown. You can see that there is that uh, groove in here, the uh, splice that we will be putting the splines in, uh, which will keep it help keep it from uh, warping and so forth. Uh, so we're uh, just continuing on and it's looking good. I like it so far. We glued the laminate on, it's all nice and secure, so now we're going to trim it up. So the reason I just put the tape here is sometimes uh, with any router you can pick up a little grumbly um, and then that dragging on the plastic laminate can uh, scratch it. So this is just a little extra protection. And another reason I do underneath the lift edge here, you'll see here, this is for my bearing to ride on. And the reason again is just for extra insurance. So it uh, doesn't matter what router bit uh, brand, sometimes these bearings can uh, dry up and, and stick. So if you're dragging it and this is spinning and then the bearing, bearing stops, basically that bearing is going to sit spinning at 10,000 RPM and what it does, it can burn your surface. So it just gives you a little extra protection because we're filing off or sanding off the, uh, the edge anyway. So, and it gives us just a little extra to play with. So, uh, that's the reasoning behind that. So here we go. Let's uh, wrap this up. Alright, so we did the trimming, you saw that, and then what I do, um, traditionally you would take a router with a 45 degree chamfer bit and go around the perimeter and uh, finish the edge off that way. Um, I don't do it that way, uh, the reason being that um, it can't, your router can tip and so forth and you can get uh, wows in it. So, and I don't like the 45 degree angle. So just imagine, um, let's see if this will bend. So if you've got a curved edge, which is what we actually do, it's a nice rounded edge, it feels good. And so if you look at, at a curved edge, if this was completely round over, it's actually not as noticeable as compared to a, a 45 degree surface, which would be like this and you'd see this whole plane. So the way I do that is I router, with a flush trim bit and then I use an 80 grit just to knock down most of the edge and then I come behind with a, about a 180 or 220 grit sandpaper and I round over like that okay now some of you might be wondering why I use laminate uh, I do love laminate I still love laminate um, I've been using it my whole career even all before becoming a certified RV technician Laminate is inexpensive, so when you're dealing with tight budgets and so forth, it's a great alternative compared to a solid surface material. It's also easier to work with, and the nice thing about it is because it is, inex it is inexpensive, 
um, compared to a lot of other surface materials, it's, uh, it's easily replaceable too. So with lacquer thinner, I can actually just peel up the old laminate. The base will still be just fine. I can, uh, with some prep, I can glue a new laminate down and you can have a whole new look. So in an RV, you know, you get tired of you know, a countertop in five years, are you gonna spend a whack of money doing uh, a whole solid surface countertop? Probably not, but with laminate, yeah, it's a, it's a way to go. We do not use particle board. We do not use MDF as a core. We only use plywood. I just I like plywood. It, uh, it's you know if it's done right with the with the backer board, uh, which you saw earlier, it's uh, it's it's stable. And when you put screws in underneath, the screws really hold into plywood uh, for mounting. So as far as the laminates go, so. Um, laminates were used a lot in the 80s and 90s and you know but the laminates today it's, it's not what we had back then um, like another thing I like about the laminates today they are smooth there is gloss and the glosses are just gorgeous and they even have texture so when I'm designing I do take into account textures so this one actually looks and feels just like leather it's absolutely amazing so you can see how much texture there is. I mean, you, you'd be hard pressed to realize that that wasn't actually leather. Here's another cool one. So this actually looks like scorched wood. I can't wait to work on a unit with this. Uh, it's just, it's a gorgeous silvery gray in with black. So uh, that's one I'm looking forward to. And look at this one, it's, it looks like blue jeans, like torn and sewn together blue jeans. Um, here's one that looks exactly light slate. So it's mostly dull, but it's just got little highlights of a sheen. And I'm hoping you can pick that up. Mm -hmm. It looks just like slate. Um, and the stone, the stone, uh, this one's more flatted, but a lot of the stone uh, patterns actually have depth to them. Uh, they're just amazing. So yeah, so you know, when you're talking budgets and so forth, Look at that one. It's, it has so much depth. It has like a pearl, pearlescent, and it just looks like layers throughout it. So yeah, when you're talking a budget for an RV, you know, laminates are a great way to go. They, they really are. And uh, they're relatively easy uh, to install. And um, so we love it and we'll continue using it. So we've covered the, and trimmed out with the router and did our little final ed, uh, sanding on the edge. Uh, I'm calling this the field because it's surrounded by this border. The reason I went with the red, I think I mentioned it before because we have a red wheel that matches this red and we have a beautiful awning that is red and white variegated stripe. And um, this is a, a, this brown is a reddish brown. So actually the two com complement each other and it just you know makes it stand out a little bit more. So as you can see my little splines in here uh, I've opted to not uh, put a bead of glue in here to attach it just because these panels are going to want to shift and so forth. Uh, where if this were to crack, it would crack in the corner here. So if you see here, I've actually rounded this corner with the router bit. I did not uh, file it or sand it sharp. It's not a sharp point in here. And the reason for that is because these panels could move like this. Uh, this end piece even though it's screwed and so forth and what can happen with a sharp point is it'll develop a weak point and it'll crack it'll just crack out here somewhere so we want to try and avoid that so we've got a uh, nice curve so uh, any joinery that we do we just like to be able to uh, close it up really nice minimal effort okay now, between the two joints, I've also just slightly uh, mitered it, so it's just a nice feel because um, despite all your best efforts, this will never be exact, but it's pretty damn good. Uh, but you'll never get it perfect. So this way, there's no sharp edges uh, for a customer to feel. And even if they run their hands down like this, their fingers, there will be no sharp edges compared to like the back, which is a tiny bit sharp of an edge. Okay, so that's showing the big reveal of what it's going to look like. This is half and then uh, I'll be doing the, the rest of the other half and the next time you'll see it will be probably on 
the trailer itself with the brackets and I'm very happy with the way this turned out. No arguing <laughs> on this one. We're getting a little better. All right, so we're at the front of the trailer and what we're doing is we're gonna be boxing this A-frame out. Uh, it's gonna have a countertop which will have the same brown laminate as the, uh, the main bar top that's going on that side that people will walk to. Uh, walk up to the servers at the um, at the uncommons food hall they're basically going to be coming here from both sides grabbing uh, drinks and so forth and heading off to the customers and so this is just going to uh, now we're going to wrap it in brown laminate I could have done it uh, in the white aluminum as well um, however our client our clients company has uh, branding, uh, certain branding. So the whole basis of her uh, Bloody Mary drinks, it's all natural ingredients. So it's all wholesome. It's from the farm idea. So we want to incorporate as much of that into this trailer, give it a little extra personality and a little jazz. So what we're doing is we're doing a field of the black or the brown wood laminate, but we're overlaying it with white PVC lattice and it gives it a little bit of farm touch. Plus, it will give a white, uh, a basically a white panel on both sides here that will tie in with the, the unit. Um, now, for those of you guys that want to do trailers like this and you are using the, I call this a quilted pattern. It's very uh, common with vintage trailers. You'll see when you, when you get the panels from the manufacturers, they typically are almost four feet wide, okay? They, they can make it as long as you want. Uh, for your particular trailer. Now the thing with the, this sheet metal being that it's a big panel, you will be securing it on the ends and you can staple it where the window openings are going to be. But just with the nature of the product itself, you can see if I push here, it's pillowy. Okay, and this is just a phenomenon that happens. So on this particular trailer, uh, if you look down the sides and so forth, I didn't do it here, but what I do is actually I put beads of silicone in behind on the wood uh, studs. And then it will help adhere this so you won't have it all banging around. It'll be all more, more solid. Uh, so that's just another thing. So uh, another little pro tip. So if you are peeling, have to peel this off because of a collision or something happens, the nice thing about the silicone bead is you can actually get in there with a long knife and just slice the backside of your sheet metal and just slice it down and then scrape it off and redo it again. So that's that's just something we like. And as far as any, uh, what silicone, just any general purpose silicone will work. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Uh, it sets up overnight and works great. But I did not do it for here. Um, I think I may have forgot, <laughs> but it doesn't matter anyway because this box is going up pretty much close to this anyway. So you'll never, it won't be an issue. Okay. Yep. Can you describe the barn wood that we have in here? Okay. So our first uh, plan on this particular trailer was to clad the, the inside wall here as well as the back wall in real barn wood. And the food inspectors, food inspection agency, uh, basically, uh, basically killed that pretty quick. <laughs> so what we're doing is a PVC uh, LVT, uh, luxury vinyl tile. It's thin, um, and we got something that looks very much like the silver barn wood. We're actually using two different colors. So the other color uh, ranges in because this gray is quite consistently gray. And we, I didn't want it to just look just like all silver. Uh, I wanted to give it a little pizzazz. So we're injecting uh, these darker ones in, and then we got these medium browns. And then the brown ties a little bit more in with our flooring, which is right here. So all in all, now the all the fixtures in here will be stainless steel. Most likely counter, the countertops will also be stainless steel. So I think the, the silvery barn wood, as well as this dark color, actually blends quite well and marries up uh, and complements the stainless steel. So that's the game plan. That's what we gotta do. Uh, 
you know, when life gives you lemons, uh, add lots and lots of vodka. So this is our, our vodka to try and make it, make it uh, the, best we, the best we can, yeah. And, uh, we, you know, that's our job. We, you know, you, you have to roll with the punches and that's, that's what uh, customizing is all about. You're never, you're never dealt, you know, ideal situations. So you really just make the best of it and uh, choose good products. This will be glued to the wall. That'll be coming up uh, pretty soon. You've seen me uh, building all the components. Uh, we did miss a little bit of the top and uh, that, that's okay. It's pretty much the same as the bottom. So we've got the A-frame here. We didn't want to clad, one option was to clad the, the box uh, with the same siding. Uh, it would have been a lot. Um, and it just quite, probably wouldn't quite look that right. So again, going back to the branding uh, for this particular customer, it's all about farm, farm fresh. And uh, what we decided was to go with the PVC uh, lattice. What we've done is we've set it into a groove, both top and bottom, and that holds it in place. If someone hits it, it's not the end of the world because it just springs back. And what it does is it creates a nice shadow line and uh, makes it a little more interesting. And then of course, we've got the, the top, which has a nice curve front, which helps protect people from the actual trailer hitch, the ball mount hitch. Um, so we went a little bit thicker, a little chunkier, and the reason for that is this, the window openings will have this exact same laminate, probably around two and a half inch wood frame all wrapped all the way around. It'll be wrapped on the inside of the window frame as well. Uh, this will have a little bit of a, a countertop just sticking out. And then this is pretty much for the servers. The servers only, uh, they can put their trays here, grab the drinks, and uh, load up and head off to the tables. And what's nice is now they can, and they can put condiments here too, napkins and what, whatever they need. And then uh, it's just a nice surface for them and a nice height. So uh, we're looking forward to seeing how this works for everyone and continue on. And we'll be doing the frames uh, here shortly. Because I, I need them for doing setup. I literally have to go through this every fucking day. <laughs> oh my god. Well, I guess I gotta cut new ones, which is a nice big waste of my time. No, I really don't want this film, Terry. This is this is ridiculous.